Good morning, Grade 12s. Here is the discussion on the short story Next Door by Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut, an American writer, was born in Indianapolis, Indiana, in the United States of America, in 1922 and passed away in 2007. He studied chemistry and engineering. After joining the army, he was captured by German forces during World War II and imprisoned in the city of Dresden while it was being bombed by British aircraft. His war experiences would provide material for some of his later writing. His work was experimental, leaning towards science fiction. According to the short story analysis, Next Door tells of a coming-of-age incident of an eight-year-old boy who is left at home by his parents because they think the film they are going to see is not suitable for a young boy. They leave him in the house and his father says it will be an adventure to stay alone. Parents want to keep their children innocent for as long as possible. Here they do not want to expose Paul to the wrong subject matter and rather leave him home, a place of safety and security. It is ironic that it is here, at a place supposed to be safe, that Paul is confronted, without the guidance of his parents to place everything into perspective, by infidelity and in fear, violence, the screaming, the banging of the doors, the breaking of crockery, the shots being fired, and extortion, bribery, threats. The protagonist, Paul, comes to realize that life is not only rainbows and fairy princesses and candy floss. His childhood dropped away and he hung, dizzy on the brink of life, rich, violent, rewarding. This quote links to the theme of coming of age. He's not a child anymore. He realizes life is not only good, rich and rewarding, but also consists of bad parts, violent. Can you still remember when you realize that life is not only good things? When did you lose your innocence, your wide-eyed wonder at everything? How sad is it that childhood is lost so quickly these days due to technology at our fingertips? When we look at the vocabulary, on page 123, the word fidelity means faithfulness. Pulling a cork is opening a bottle and usually associated with alcohol. Engendered means to give rise to or be the cause of. Amiably, friendly, pleasant manner. Relished, enjoyed greatly. On page 124, judiciously, showing good judgment, winced, made a slight involuntary grimace or shrinking movement of the body out of pain or distress, frail, weak and delicate, dissonant, jarring, discordant, not harmonious. On page 125, bewilderment, a feeling of being confused, swell, a slang term meaning great or excellent, crockery, Plates, dishes, cups, and so forth, normally made of china. Page 126. Rending means to tear. Subversive, undermine power and authority. The Attorney General is the head of the United States of America Department of Justice. Din is a loud, unpleasant, ongoing noise. And appalled, greatly horrified. Page 127. Cooings. Affectionate sounds, philandering, a man who has casual physical relationships with women. Two timing, deceitful or unfaithful. Two bit, cheap or worthless. Lockenver, a young knight, a romantic but fiction, fictional character. Page 128, awry, out of the normal or correct position, askew. Squealers, people who inform authority of wrongdoings. Mulch is organic matter, straw or bark put on a garden to keep the soil wet and to provide nutrients. Billy club, a stout stick or club used by police officers in the United States of America. Haggard, exhausted, unwell. Urbanely, show sophistication. Bizarre, very strange or unusual. Page 129, grappled means wrestled. Page 130, wistfully with a feeling of regretful longing. Gaily, cheerful or in a light-hearted way. Chrysanthemum, a type of flower, and here you can see what a chrysanthemum looks like. Befuddling, causes one to be unable to think clearly. 
pungent, sharp, strong smell. Taboo, a perfume. And this links to the word taboo, which means forbidden by society and religion. The characters. We find the Leonids. They are considerate. They stay on the north side of the house that has been divided. The father does not like his wife babying their son. The mother, she treats the son like a baby, sings him a nursery rhyme, calls him her little adventurer. The son is eight. His name is Paul. He is tall for his age. He is thin, sweet-natured, has good manners. He is still childlike. When we see after the incident, he hides after the incident. He doesn't go and investigate. He's still very innocent. He tries to fix grown-up problems with the naivety of a child. And he's also our protagonist. The Hargers are not so considerate. We find Mr. Hager, Lemuel or Lem K. He is small in stature. He's balding. He has a thin moustache. He lies, he cheats on his wife, he is not to be trusted. Mrs. Hager, her name is Rose, and she is a big motherly person. The third party is Charlotte. We start off by thinking she is Mrs. Hager, but she turns out to be the other woman. She's passionate, impulsive, a bit aggressive, big and blonde. She looks disheveled. She's desperate for Paul to keep quiet, and she is willing to try threats and bribery. All Night Sam, he works for a radio station called WJCD. This is situated in Norfolk, Virginia. He's an announcer. He calls himself the record man. He uses slang, swell, dunno, okay, kid, gonna, blow his brains out. He's emotional. He's boastful. He sounds wise and authoritative. He's not a mathematician. Four halves is not one. He's loud and he loves the sound of his own voice. The setting. As we know, it's in the United States of America and according to the WJCD reference, probably Norfolk, Virginia. It takes place in an old house that had been divided into two dwellings by a thin partition. It could be anywhere during the 1950s to the 1970s. There are still dial phones and the music is quite old fashioned from the 1920s through to the 1950s, these songs. The title, Next Door, names the setting and suggests that what is next door is not very far away. It can have an effect on our lives. Themes. We find conflict. The Leonards are in conflict over leaving their son alone at home and the mother treating their son like a baby. They do it very civilized. They're not harsh. They do not yell at each other. They are actually quite very friendly. Mr. Hogg and the women next door, they are in conflict. They fight passionately. You hear doors banging, you hear loud words, they are speaking very loudly, they turn the radio up so that no one can hear them fighting, very passionate. Mr. Hager and his wife go through conflict. They are reconciled after their argument about the third party in the marriage. Paul experiences conflict with Charlotte when she threatens him, also with Mr. Hager who basically intimidates him into lying to the policeman. He also experiences internal conflict when he thinks he was the cause of a man's death. We find the theme of innocence, how innocent Paul is and how he tries to fix a marriage. And then also, as we mentioned, coming of age. However hard adults try to shield children from the world's harsh realities, they will eventually be confronted and even changed by it. Figures of speech on page 123. A thin wall that passes on with high fidelity sounds. Personification, the wall passes on the sounds, a wall cannot physically do it. Also situational irony, as Mr. Hogg is not faithful like the wall. On page 124, the music was frail, is a metaphor. Music is compared to a weak person, it shows the music was low in volume. It, the hair, looked like a glistening brown eel, it's a simile. An idea of hair being long and brown. On page 125, down into the milky mist of the damaged lens. Alliteration and metaphor. View through the lens is compared to a white mist one cannot see clearly. Louder and louder, cruel and crazy. Alliteration. Harsh, loud sounds emphasize the fighting. 
High, ragged, poisonous shout is a metaphor. Screaming is compared to a snake. It's dangerous. Radio volume swelled. Personification. Music is something living that can become bigger. The boom of the bass. Alliteration and onomatopoeia. It shows how loud the music was. Made Paul feel like he was trapped in a drum. Simile again shows how loud the music is. The music picked up the house and shook it. Personification and hyperbole. It shows the loud music. Tidal wave of music drowned. Metaphor and personification. Music is like a tidal wave or a tsunami that rushes over all other sounds. On page 126, bleating music is a metaphor. Music is like a sheep making a high-pitched sound. Rending the radio, alliteration, metaphor and personification. Music is seen as something that can tear or destroy. It again shows how loud the music is. Shoot is actually very ironic. Not long after this, the reader is exposed to three shots. The woman's voice cuts through the din. Personification, the voice is even louder than the radio. And then, just like some angel was trying to tell him, Simony, he justifies his actions spiritually. It gives him authority. On page 127, it isn't any bowl of cherries. Metaphor, marriage isn't always sweet and enjoyable. Sam was speaking like the right-hand man of God. Simile, it gives Sam authority and importance. The world lay still. Personification, it's as if there's peace on earth. Purple emotion flooded Paul's being. Personification, purple is also associated with nobility. Paul did a noble or good thing. Childhood dropped away and he hung, dizzy, on the brink of life. Rich, violent, rewarding. It's personification. This quirk links to the theme of coming of age. He's not a child anymore. He realizes life is not only good, rich and rewarding, but also consists of bad faults, violent. You jewel beyond price. Sarcastically, Charlotte calls Lemuel special. You worm, a metaphor to show Lemuel is a low life. Page 128. All soft and awry like an unmade bed. Similarly, Charlotte does not look neat. Perfumed mulch is a metaphor. Things she puts in Paul's hands are like organic matter. It smells of her perfume. Clumping, onomatopoeia. Hot, dark cave, metaphor. Paul's bed is a place where he can hide away from reality. Hairline moustache, metaphor. It's a very thin moustache. Walls are thin as paper. Similarly, the walls lead through all sounds. On page 129, little Rose, oxymoron, she is not little at all. Awfully pleased with the mess, paradox, someone is not normally happy with the mess. She feels useful and that Lemuel struggled to cope without her. Of course, she finds the mess after Lemuel and Charlotte had had the violent argument. The ball of money in Paul's pocket seemed to swell to the size of a watermelon. Personification and hyperbole, it shows Paul's guilt over the line. Voices were sunny, a metaphor. His parents' voices bring warmth, light, and life like the sun. He feels safe with them. He feels warm and loved. On page 130, I realized all over again how dreadfully short childhood is. This is dramatic irony. Paul's childhood innocence was shattered by the infidelity and violence that took place next door. The reader therefore knows something that the mother does not. Ball bloomed, alliteration and metaphor. The money and tissues are like a flower that opens up. Like a frowsy chrysanthemum, simile, still apply on the idea of a flower blooming or opening. Aspects of the short story. Exposition, we are told about the hoggers and the linnets living next to each other. It's clear that the Leonard mother and father are going to watch a film which they do not want their son to see. Rising action, the conflict that Paul overhears builds up. Climax, the three gunshots. Denouement, Paul realizes that Mr. Haga has not been killed. There's an affair that broke up. Mr. and Mrs. Haga are reunited. Paul grows up after the adventures of his evening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just a very short 
analysis of the short story next door. Um, when we meet up again, I am going to hand you more notes on this. Please remember to answer the questions, which I have sent through. And then please make sure that you also answer the vocabulary test. Please keep up to date. Keep academically fit. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Please stay safe. Goodbye, everyone.